This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. All right, we're going to be talking a little bit about using modifiers and the modifier stack within 3ds Max. So first of all, let's make an object in order to modify. So now I'll go to the modifier panel. Within the modifier panel, first of all, it shows me the name of my object. And I have a modifier list with a drop down arrow and it shows me now this is the stack. Right now there's really not a whole lot going on in the stack. I just have a cylinder. Right here are my parameters for my object. And let's look at a bend modifier. The bend modifier is going to allow me to just bend an object based on a numerical value angle and a direction. I can also change the bend axis. So I can do some pretty wild stuff here. Z is where we're going to want to be for this though. So as I bend an object over, like the default cylinder here, you can see as it gets bent over, it gets pretty stepped. Right now it only has five height segments. So as that object bends over to, let's just make it full 180 degrees, you can see it actually looks eh, pretty chunky, right? So we'll go back to the cylinder below the bend and make an adjustment to that. Max is one of the few packages in the world that allows us to do this. So we're going to add some height segments. Let's just change this to 10 and see what it looks like. That's not too bad, but if we hit Alt-W, you can see as I look at it at a profile here, I can still see some pretty serious stepping within that object. So let's just double that again. Let's go all the way to 20. And that looks pretty good. Now, depending on my proximity to the object, that may or may not be enough segments. So for now, we'll just leave it there. We can, and we don't really need to for this, but let's increase the sides as well. So we get a nice smooth object as we look around it. Now if I go back to the bend, my bend can still be adjusted. If we go too far, it gets a little crazy. So the bend modifier can still be adjusted. I can also, if I turn on auto key, choose to animate that bend. So at frame 30, which is one second in, if I right click now on my spinner, I'll set it back to zero. I see this little red bracket pops up around my spinners that shows me that I have a keyframe at this point in time. So if we scrub through our animation here, we'll see that over time, our cylinder bends over. So I can also continue to modify this. Well, maybe we actually want to switch the order of those keys. So if I bring this out, We'll bring our straight up keyframe back to zero and our bent over one out to 30. So now over time it starts out straight and then bends over. So what we'll do here at frame 30 is also adjust the direction. So now as my cylinder bends over, it also turns and faces a different direction. Now maybe that's not how I really want the cylinder to look. Maybe I want the cylinder to have a nice curved taper to it. So let's add a taper modifier. We go down here, we find our taper modifier, and that gets added into the stack. So now I have the taper modifier above the bend modifier. The taper now, as I adjust the amount, can either expand or contract one end or the other of my object. So we'll expand it, we'll also add some curvature. So as I push that up, it bulges out. As I pull it down to negative, it bulges inward. So. That looks pretty cool, that works for this. And now, as I scrub through time here, I see that the bend is actually moving my cylinder through the taper modifier. That's definitely not what I want to have happen. It's kind of a funky, cool shape, but I want my tapered cylinder to be bending over. So all we need to do is drag that taper modifier down below the bend. Now what's happening is that my cylinder is being tapered and then being bent. So the lowest thing down in the stack is what's happening first. So now, as we scrub through here, our tapered cylinder gets bent over. So the order of modifiers in the stack can make a real big difference as to how your object works when it's animated. Now because that taper is so wide, it's definitely overlapping itself right there. So we'll want to go back to our bend and possibly adjust the amount there. Or I can go all the way back to the cylinder and actually adjust the height. 
we can adjust the height, we can adjust the radius, and now it doesn't overlap at the bottom. Oh, and actually, since I had auto key turn on, I animated the height and the radius when I changed that. So you can see these now have key values, and you can tell the width of this changes over time, so it gets a little more narrow. We can also animate or just change if I turn off auto key. I can add some height segments to this so that as it bends over, it stays really, really smooth. If I turn my edged faces on, see how much geometry is really there. And we can even add more to that if we wanted to. So we could go, look at 60. We get a nice number of segments along the height there so that as it bends over, it stays nice and smooth. Now, there's really no limit to the number and order and combination of modifiers you can add to an object. We can add things like FFDs. FFDs are freeform deforms. So I have box and cylinder FFD, which allows me to change the number of points horizontally and vertically. Let's just start with an FFD 2x2x2. Two by two by two. So as I add the FFD, I need to go into the sub-object of the FFD and affect the control points. The control points are basically these little corners that can be edited and manipulated to deform or stretch my object. So now because again that's happening above the bend in the taper, the bend in the taper will allow that object to sweep through the deformity. So if we drag our FFD down below the taper in the bend, It'll be deformed and then be modified. So some pretty crazy stuff. Now maybe I want the FFD in between. So I want it to be tapered, then the FFD to happen, and then the bend to happen. Now part of what's going on there is as the cylinder moves outside of the FFD, it doesn't work on the object quite the same way. So we would need to make sure that the FFD actually stays surrounding the object. So what we can do, we can just take that FFD, hit the little trash can icon, and we've removed the FFD from the stack. So again, with everything else, I encourage you to play, really, just play with all the different modifiers that you have in the stack here, in the modifier list. See what things do. There's a lot of different modifiers. Some of them we'll be getting into in later lessons, but for the most part, we can't cover all of them. So look around, play with them. There's a lot of really, really cool modifiers in there.